This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. On today's program, we're going to deal with the topic of how you can change your reality and how you can change your nation's reality. Now, I understand for a lot of people that that concept is is, uh, challenging and difficult for them because they are proceeding from a non-biblical presumption. And the non-biblical presumption is this, that God is sovereign, which is true. You see, even spiritual era often contains truth. God is sovereign. That's absolutely true. There's no question about it. God is sovereign. He will do what he wants to do. But God also says throughout his word, beginning in Genesis and throughout the entire Bible, that every man and woman can pray to God and ask God to intervene and ask God to change things. It's said thousands and thousands of different ways, but it is said. And also, God says, pray always. Well, why would God tell us to pray always if our prayers couldn't change things? Yet you have all these people running around saying that, God is sovereign. There's nothing we can do to change God's sovereign will. Well, it's true. God is sovereign, and in a sense it's true. In a sense it's true that there's nothing we can do to change his sovereign will. But God still says, pray. Pray always. Pray in all things. And then gives us specific commandments about praying and instructions about praying. In fact, let's take the most important thing of all, salvation. Let's talk about salvation for a moment. All men and women are born with a fallen human nature. All men and women alive today who have not yet received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior They've not yet invited Christ into their lives to become born again. When they die, they will be eternally separated from God. They will not get into heaven. They will not be born again. It's over. They will be sentenced to the abyss forever and ever and ever. Why? Because it's God's sovereign will that they were sent there. Again, there's this interplay between truth and error. On one hand, the argument could be raised that a sovereign God chooses to send uh, who he has created um, for the abyss, into the abyss. But on the other hand, in John 3.16, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever should believeth in him and and should should not perish but have everlasting life. So the key here is you can change your eternal reality. You can change your reality down here on earth by praying, by coming to to God, asking God to forgive you of your sins and inviting Jesus Christ into your life to make you born again. When you are born again, you're guaranteed entrance into heaven. You will have a new glorified body and you will live forever and ever and ever in heaven with God in the new Jerusalem, the new heaven and the new earth. Does that change your reality? Of course it does. It rocks your world for crying out loud. It rocks your world. So then you have people running around saying, well, you know, I don't pray because it's God's sovereign will. Well, that statement alone, I don't pray because it's against God's sovereign will, is, is completely, diametrically opposed to what God teaches us, what Jesus teaches us. We're told over and over and over again to pray, because prayer changes things. Now, if God didn't want things to be changed in your life and my life, and the nations we live in, the communities we live in, the homes we live in, if God did not want things changed, he would not give, have given us the power to pray. So it's really a no-brainer, isn't it? Of course we have been given the power uh, by God to change things. So, so when you hear you know, people getting nervous about that, you, you really have to say to yourself, how much of the Bible do they read? 
Do they really read the Bible? Because they don't. You, there's no way you could walk away from reading the Bible. There's no way you could walk away from reading the words of Jesus Christ and come up with this ridiculous idea that, you know, prayer doesn't change things. Of course prayer changes things. And the primary example, once again, is when you pray to God for salvation and you're saved, you better believe that changes things. It gives you eternal life. So we're in the world that we're in now by God's design, by his sovereign will. And again, God shows you, God shows me, before the foundation of the world, or before the world began, to be here for such a time as this. You and I were, were selected before the beginning of time to live in this particular time zone, or to live in whatever nation you're, you're listening to me in. And for what? To sit on our posteriors and, 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 you know, watch the world go by? Of course not. We're to change things. That's what occupy until I come means. Occupy means to, exer- to exercise the supernatural authority that God has given us. Um, to exercise dominion and rulership over planet Earth or over the land that God has given us. It's a very simple thing to understand. It's not complicated at all. God has called us to do that. In fact, that is one of the, the primary commands that Jesus Christ gave the church, that's you and me, Christians, before he ascended into heaven. The primary commands were called the Great Commission. And the Great Commission consists of things like going into all the world and preaching the gospel, making disciples of all nations, occupying the land until he comes, and of course winning souls for Christ, etc., etc. That's our mandate. And all of that implies that we have the power to change things. After all, if we didn't have the power to change things, what would be the purpose of God calling you before the foundation of the world to be here for such a time as this if you were powerless and couldn't do anything? Why would he waste his time sending you here into this time zone? If you could do nothing, he might as well leave you, you know, before the world began. And why would God tell us to go into all the world and preach the gospel if our actions and faith did not end up saving souls? You see, we're changing things when we do that. Why would God call us to make disciples of all nations if, in fact, we could not make disciples of all nations? Nor why would God call us to occupy the land if he didn't give us the power to occupy the land? So simple, man. All this stuff is so simple. So when people complicated it, it's really, they have some kind of hidden agenda. I don't know what the hidden agenda is. Maybe unbelief. Maybe a religious spirit. I use that word advisedly, but I do believe there's a religious spirit. A religious spirit is a counterfeit of the Holy Spirit. Where somebody says they're a Christian, but they, they manifest a carnality that is certainly not Christian, but it, but it appears to be uh, religious. We're going to dig into some truth that will set you free, not only set you free, set your families and loved ones free, and set the nation or the community that God has called you in to be free. Because after all, Jesus Christ came to set the captives free. You're listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. We'll be back in just a minute. This is the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. Okay, so let's examine the nation that you live in. Let's say you live in America. Examine it. Let's say you live in France or Germany, New Zealand, Australia, South Africa, some other part of Africa, South America, Mexico, Canada, an Asian nation, a Middle Eastern nation, wherever, Europe, European Union. Examine those nations, but specifically examine the nation you're in. And ask yourself the question, is your nation truly fulfilling God's plan 
for that nation. God has a plan for every individual nation. Again, America has a very special plan, not because America is better than anybody else or more superior, because there are a unique set of factors that came about in the forming of America, primarily the fact that America was founded by pilgrims and Puritans who were fervent Bible-believing Christians who entered into a supernatural covenant with God based on the covenant with God that God made with Israel uh, that was codified in Deuteronomy chapter 28 where you see the blessings and the curses. So America was dedicated by the pilgrims and Puritans in the 1600s to be used by God. And the condition was really this. If Americans or any other nation group, if we worship the true God, the biblical God, and we don't worship idols, we're blessed. And if we hearken diligently unto the voice of the Lord thy God and obey diligently all of his commandments, we're blessed. Above all the nations of the earth, by the way. However, if we worship idols, if we disobey the word of God, then you see a whole list of curses that comes upon the nation and the peoples. And this would be true to a lesser or greater extent uh, among the other nations. So let's just look at America right now. America at this very moment is in the most intense spiritual battle for the hearts and minds of mankind in a prophetic sense that will infect the not infect that would be a curse that will affect the entire world. In fact, the situation is so grave that what is going to happen in America in the near future will, will essentially establish a pathway uh, regarding which way the world itself will go. The world will either go into increasing, increasing accelerated darkness or the world will be given light by God and grace. In either case, God's prophetic word will will come true. But let's look at America. And we see one of the most disturbing things in America right now is this alliance of social media, mainstream media, internet, tech giants, etc., that are censoring all points of view that they don't agree with. So in other words, if somebody is trying to communicate a point of view on the internet or whatever, that's conservative, libertarian, Christian, deals with Bible prophecy or whatever, and that annoys the heads of these tech companies, you know, the big social media companies, they assume they have the right to censor, remove, and take these people off the social media. And a lot of people think mistakenly because they're they're not strategic thinkers. They don't use the entire brain that God gave them. They think this is about <clears throat> getting you know people like Alex Jones of Infowars off the air. Well, that's who they're targeting now. They're targeting Alex Jones and Infowars. They're gonna, they're doing everything they can to take him off all social media, all mainstream media, every media. But let's not be naive for a minute. It begins with Alex Jones. But you see, once you allow totalitarianism, once you allow the Orwellian spirit, the Big Brother spirit to take over, it is insatiable in its thirst and appetite. And it is not happy until it devours or removes every single blog, every single website, every single podcast, every single... Uh, video system up on social media, all social media, until it removes, literally, it's a very short pathway from uh, Alex Jones going down to uh, removing all Christian content, all of it. Why? Because they've already classified the Bible and people who believe in the Bible and, and Christian words and statements as being hate speech 
or as being intolerant or as being anti this or anti that. They've already categorized it as extremists, etc. The only reason they're going after Alex Jones is that he may have a large presence, relatively speaking. But in their minds, he's a soft target. He's a soft target because uh, his presentation is kind of a flamethrower presentation. He directly and specifically attacks them. And uh, he's very bold and very uh, uh, aggressive. And so they perceive, they simultaneously fear him because whether you like him or not, he's, he's effective in communicating. The bombastic, you know, uh, type of presentations he gives uh, that they love to mock, um, well, mock it or not, that type of presentation, which, which has kind of a theatrical flair, reaches people, reaches millions and millions of people. So they, they don't like his effectiveness so they targeted him. Now, the other reason they're targeting him is because those same attributes he has, which has allowed him to reach a large audience, also make him vulnerable. Thus, he's a soft target because a lot of people who are conservatives or, or Christians are alienated by that kind of style. They don't want anything to do with it. Therefore, he's deeply loved and he's uh, held at a distance by some. So, the, 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 the uh, collective consciousness, if you will, of the tech giants and the social media companies and the mainstream media was to take Alex Jones because he can more easily be pick, uh, portrayed as an extremist and uh, a hate monger. So, he, so all things considered, he's a softer target. And they always go after soft targets e- easily. But let's also remember that this uh, antagonism towards Alex Jones and Infowars um, did not just happen randomly. It didn't just happen because more and more people on a spontaneous basis became increasingly uh, uh, bothered by him. No, that's all a bunch of garbage. It was the hatred and the campaign to take Alex Jones off social media and mainstream media, etc., was specifically generated by one specific te- television network, CNN. And CNN went on a specific campaign and specifically used all of its power to generate hatred and to generate momentum uh, among the tech giants, etc., who share CNN's point of view, by the way. So CNN energized the whole thing. If you remove CNN from the equation, as I've been told, there wouldn't be Alex Jones wouldn't have been taken off the air. But what you have to understand is the nature of totalitarianism, the nature of Big Brother. It starts with an Alex Jones, but quicker than you can possibly imagine. It will go to, to more moderate conservatives because, you see, the, the people that uh, are attempting to control us are, have zero tolerance for any belief system that, that questions theirs. So they'll remove the, the, the more moderate conservative voices and then much faster than you could possibly realize they will start to take down millions of Christian websites, social media pages, etc., etc., because they, they, they classify the Bible uh, as hate speech. And that's what you have to understand. You will not be able to preach the gospel, share your faith, uh, share inspirational messages, uh, put on your own blog, you know, uh, right to life messages or whatever it will all be illegal the only thing that will be legal is that which is politically correct which is always liberal socialism but the other thing is the people on the left uh, I was saying this the other day on the Hagman report the people on the left um, have changed I mean I come from the left at 14 years old 15, 16 and older I was 
demonstrating with the leftists, the, the leaders of the uh, radical leftists, Abby Hoffman, Allen Ginsberg, the poet, um, the organizers of these mass leftist demonstrations, the organizers of the first Earth Day celebration. So I was actively involved in the left, the, the radical left, by the way. And they were, and this was, you know, in, in, in the 70s, and, and they were um, um, totally different than they are today. Now, this, this was really before my time, but, but it, was, it was still remembered that the radical left started a thing called the free speech movement, which basically meant you had the right to say anything, any place, because we should have the right to free speech. So whether it was pornographic or upsetting or whatever, everybody has the right to express their viewpoints. And that was the, 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 the belief system of the radical left, the progressives, and the socialists back then. And it was started by Mario Savio at the University of Berkeley around 1961. He started the free speech movement. And again, all the speakers and talk show hosts and authors and counterculture leaders all said we believe in free speech. In fact, that's why pornography and Playboy magazine and all that stuff was allowed because people, even in the conservative realm, would say that's the price of free speech. If you're going to really have free speech, everybody has to have the right to say what they want to say or present, whether you like it or not. In other words, whether you find it highly offensive or not, everybody has the right to express their point of view. And the left was the main champion of this. And it was always Christians and conservatives that were accused of being censors. Well, here we are, you know, many decades later, and who is the prime energizing force behind censorship, behind taking away free speech, behind attacking free speech? It's the left. It's the left, it's progressives, it's socialists, it's the leftist media. The people that all used to be for free speech are now the primary enemies of free speech. Because after all, most of the leaders in the original free speech movement and the original leftist movement have either gotten considerably older and they don't have the prime leadership positions or they've died off. There were so many cases with the Supreme Court by famous authors who you could consider, you know, on the left. Henry Miller, um, uh, and so many others who would write novels and, and, and Christians would call it pornography and I'm not here to make a comment on what, whether they wrote or not was pornography but the Supreme Court said upheld the right of these uh, authors to write uh, what, whatever they wanted to write and said it was not pornography, it was art and they had the right to spe free speech now we've come full circle around and the voices on the left are saying that anybody who speaks in favor of Trump, anybody who expresses a conservative idea or exposes the truth of the New World Order, like an Infowars or other groups, or anybody who speaks, uh, communicates a Christian message or a message on prophecy, they will all, sooner or later, and it looks like it's sooner than later, be censored, their free speech will be taken away. All based on these politically correct rules that were developed by the Frankfurt School Marxists in the 1920s. So if something is not absolutely politically correct, they will censor you. So who, who the people who have become the fascists, the people who have become the Nazis, are the left. And it just so happens that this newer generation of leftists and progressives, they are nowhere near as educated as the generation of left leftists and progressives that, that I was part of. I mean, when I was demonstrating in Washington, D.C. against the Vietnam War, when I was demonstrating in the streets of Manhattan with, you know, 
hundred thousand other people and all these other demonstrations. The, the, the typical person on the left or progressive or whatever you want to call them was highly educated, very well read, knew all kinds of things about history and stuff, and they were vehemently for free speech. Now that has been taken away. And so these entities, these giant social media companies, these search engine companies, these uh, internet companies, the tech giants, the mainstream media, if you really look at them carefully, many of them, some of the biggest ones, have received funding, most often indirectly through front companies from the CIA. You say, I don't know if I believe that. Well, the only reason you wouldn't believe it is because you're uneducated and you don't know what you're talking about. I mean, I sorry, I know that sounds arrogant, but it's the truth. So let me let me just give you some factoids, so to speak. Carl Bernstein, a, a famous Pulitzer Prize winning journalist, famous for the uh, Bernstein and Woodward book on Watergate and Richard Nixon. And Bernstein was a writer with the Washington Post. So so he's probably in, in leftists and, and, and mainstream circles, probably the most respected journalist there is, okay? From a leftist perspective or mainstream perspective, from the perspective of the Washington Post, New York Times, etc. But Bernstein wrote in a Rolling Stone article that was like 25,000 words long in 1977, an article entitled The CIA and the Media. Now remember, Rolling Stone back then, I don't know about today, paid big money to have some of the biggest, uh, best journalists around write articles for them. And in this expose he wrote, he detailed in, in exquisite detail, naming all kinds of names, the direct connection between the heads of the television networks, the celebrity broadcast journalists that were household names, the magazines, the television networks, the editors, the publishers of the largest magazines, etc., and detail after detail of how high-level journalists were infiltrated by or working for or, or paid for or had very close connections with the CIA, and that's how they got their position. And he gives you 20, I have it in an article up in paulmcguire.us, you can read it. So here's a man who's considered a reliable source telling us that the CIA and the, uh, and the uh, top people in the mainstream media are connected. Now there was another thing that you ought to know, and that is that you know, the CIA had all these secret operations. One was uh, MK Ultra, which is the Mind Control Project. But the CIA had what was called um, Operation Mockingbird. And CIA's Operation Mockingbird was the CIA's uh, secret strategy to infiltrate and control and develop uh, Journalists, writers, TV producers, filmmakers, celebrity talking heads, celebrity broadcast journalists, radio talk show hosts. Operation Mockingbird, started by the CIA, was designed to recruit and allow the CIA to control the mainstream media. So that's, that's a fact. So today, many years have gone by, and... and um, the heads of the uh, social giant, tech giants, social media companies, internet companies, you will see in the mainstream press, in the mainstream press, you will see article after article exposing how the CIA, uh, usually through a front organization, funded the Googles, the Facebooks, and many other uh, big social media companies and internet companies. Microsoft, Jeff Bezos, and Amazon. 
I mean, like, what was it like? It was some fortune the CIA invested through. No, no, the CIA actually directly was hired by Jeff Bezos and Amazon to create some kind of uh, cloud system. So the CIA gave Bezos a ton of money. Now, look, there's no such thing as a free lunch. So all of these things are working in collusion with what's called the deep state. So all of this is about censoring truth, take removing truth uh, under the guise, under the subterfuge of attacking conservatives or attacking hate speech or attacking Christians, etc., but it's really about removing and censoring the truth from the public marketplace. And see, if we're in a war um, for the hearts and souls of mankind spiritually, and souls are at stake, which they are, if a man or a woman or a young boy or a young girl, if their hearts and minds have been captured by this media industrial complex, their hearts are going to be hardened towards the gospel of Jesus Christ. And their hearts hearts are hardened towards the gospel of Jesus Christ because they've been captured by this hydra of social media corporations and search engines and stuff like that. That's where we are. So how do we win this war? Well, first of all, we have to be aware that there is a war. Number two is we have to be aware of the nature of the warfare. I want to visit number two again. We have to be, any pastor, any youth group minister, any uh, Christian parent, anybody who wants to make a change in reaching people and reaching the youth, unless you fully understand the nature of the spiritual war you're involved in, and the overwhelming influence that social media and the internet and search engines and iTunes and everything else has on the average person in terms of controlling their mind, you cannot be effective in doing things to counteract it. And that's what God wants you to do. He wants you to win souls for Jesus Christ. But you see... It's difficult to win a soul for Jesus Christ when that person's soul and mind and heart is captured by the dark spiritual forces. First, you have to set them free from the dark spiritual forces, and that's more than just prayer, although that's an essential part of it. It's also, you have to present the truth in such a way that the truth drives out the darkness from their hearts and minds. That's what this battle is all about. And if you don't understand the battle, obviously you cannot uh, see victory. That's why I spent so much time researching my book, Conquering the Matrix, which you need to read. In fact, you know, that book really should be made. If I could have my way, I would, I would have every youth minister or person who reaches youth sit down and read that book and and make them read it and explain it to them until they really got it. And also read the book Mass Awakening and my book A Prophecy of the Future of America because it all deals with these themes. People need to know, young people especially, and uh, adults, they need to know what are the symptoms of being under mind control? What are, how do you know if you're under mind control? How do you know if you're uh, in a, some, a, a, a moderate trance state? How do you know if, you're, if you haven't been programmed to one degree or another? Let, let, me, let me shoot really straight. The average Christian, the average person in the United States, including conservatives, they are all, and that means we are all, to varying degrees, under one form of scientific mind control or a a light hypnotic trance state, we have all had our minds and perceptions seized to varying degrees. Now, you know, 74% of the churches in America, they've had their 
minds cease practically completely because they're when when you have when you when you're in total denial of everything I've just said, your mind has you've been programmed. I mean, you know, you're not home. The lights are on, but nobody's home. And they don't understand a basic template upon which the reality that we live on is built, and they don't understand the basic template of what is going on in this world. And I believe that the only way we can reach them and set them free spiritually is for for them to understand this. And that's why I wrote Conquering the Matrix and Mass Awakening and A Prophecy of the Future of America and Trumpocalypse with my co-author, uh, Troy Anderson. You really have to know this stuff to be set free. And you won't find it in any church because they're, they're oblivious. So, God doesn't want his people to be oblivious. That means they lack wisdom. They lack lack knowledge. That means they're going to go into captivity. So, how do we effectively combat this captivity, this mind control, this propaganda, this persuasion, this social engineering, this translates? Well, the primary way is to use the internet, to use social media, to use all forms of communication like television, podcasting, video, meetings, books, as we do with our ministry, Paul McGuire Ministries, to combat the the, the lying. But you see, if powerful forces are attempting to shut down alternative voices that speak the truth, then we are going to have a far harder job in setting uh, people's minds free because they they will be under a monopoly of information and ideas and beliefs. But at Paul McGuire Ministries, we have spent a great deal of time thinking about this, researching this, praying over this, and we have developed strategies and networks of strategies that will continue to allow us to present the truth on the internet, through social media, through television, through radio, through meetings, through books, etc., etc., which will enable us to do an end run around the censors. That's what we've been quietly but very busily doing. That's why when it comes to videos, we're not dependent upon one video uh, outlet for social media. We have our own Roku channel, which has over 100 hours of broadcast quality television programming, a lot of in-depth prophecy teaching and analysis at our Paradise Mountain Church meetings, all done in broadcast TV quality for free. There's a lot of teaching uh, and messages, prophetic messages, free at on the Roku channel called Paul McGuire Ministries, which you can get to by going to paulmcguire.us. We have the, the two-hour Paul McGuire report that you're listening to now. We, we have, uh, we're on now uh, real-life video, which allows us to, to do an end run around certain powers that are abusing their powers on the Internet. And uh, we have a feature film in development. And we have, you know, right now we have two, uh, to Apocalypse, which I wrote with Troy Anderson, is the number one best-selling prophecy book in the world and has been for month after month after month. That's reaching a lot of people. It also reaches, it has reached a lot of people at the highest levels of the White House and in the highest levels of Christian leadership. Um, our book, The Babylon Code, is, is, which came out the year before, is like number two or three best-selling prophecy book in all the world, uh, which is reaching people in the entertainment uh, industry and um, 
a number of Hollywood producers are interested in putting together the Babylon Code as a feature film. So we're penetrating the darkness. We're doing end runs, see? And then the articles I write, which go viral and reach millions of people, the Paradise Mountain Church meetings, where you can people can be ministered to on a personal level, and uh, and if you can't physically attend, you can watch him uh, on the Roku channel. And you know we're we're not going to allow these big social media giants to crush us. Okay, we're not going to allow it because they have chosen to be on the side of spiritual darkness. I mean, there's no other way of putting it. I know that sounds kind of like uh, uh, simplistic, but it's true. If you're in the business of crushing all the light, you see, this really isn't a war, a media war, or a social media war against conservatism or um, libertarianism or Christianity. It's a war against truth. It's a war against the truth and the light. That isn't to say every conservative is like truth and light. I'm not saying that. But there are more conservatives that allow truth and light through their messages and media than in other political spectrums. And Christians, you know, when they communicate about Christ and God, are a powerful force of light in this world. So you have these social media giants and tech giants. It's, it's pure evil. They will eventually censor the light and the truth. Uh, because they're brainwashed. They're under this... They are working for the globalist elite. And, the, and they don't even know who the globalist elite are. Only the very top people know who the globalist elite are. They don't, they don't understand the ramifications of a one-world socialist government. They think it's going to be equality for all, which only reflects how ignorant and uneducated they are. I mean, look at Jeff Bezos. They call him the richest man in the world. He's not the richest man in the world. Who calls him the richest man in the world, by the way? Forbes, a mainstream media publication. The Forbes list of the richest men in the world and, and the naming of Jeff's, Jeff Bezos as the richest man in the world is a joke. You'd have to be a total moron to believe that. You'd have to be an idiot to believe that Jeff Bezos is the wealthiest man in the world. That's what the elite want you to believe. Now, it isn't that Jeff Bezos is not filthy rich and worth, you know, enough, just a vast fortune. He's worth billions and billions of dollars. He's very, very powerful. We're not, we're not negating that. But the truly wealthiest and most powerful people in the world, their names are carefully concealed and hidden from you by fake news. See, fake news is saying Jeff Bezos is the wealthiest man in the world, when indeed he's not. The wealthiest men or women in the world the most powerful men or women in the world, their names are never published on the Forbes list as the wealthiest people in the world. Why? Because these people who are truly the wealthiest people in the world are part of international banking families that go back hundreds and hundreds of years, that have their financial roots directly into the kings and queens of Europe, and they have spread out their vast wealth, their vast real estate holdings, their vast silver mines and gold mines and oil uh, deposits, their vast banking treasuries. Okay, We're talking about one group that could be named, Rothschild. But you see, you're not going to get an accurate projection of the power and the, and, and the monetary worth of the Rothschild family because it's spread out among family members and it's diversified with all kinds of companies to conceal the real, the, the real extent of their wealth. The same with the Rockefellers. Do you think for a moment that the Rockefellers are not 
far, far wealthier than Jeff Bezos, so they've been at it a long, long time. They've invested and multiplied their wealth, but they have it hidden. They don't have it all under the name of one particular Rockefeller. So the mainstream media is concealing from you the truly wealthiest, the truly globalist elite. You don't. Their names are not uh, uh, published as being the wealthiest people in the world. But their holdings and their wealth and their assets astronomically exceed that of just Jeff Bezos or Bill Gates or whatever. And that's where the real power is that controls the world. And then, you know, the naivete of the average millennial, the average, well, take Jeff Bezos. Jeff Bezos, he's made a fortune. Because what he did, to his credit, it's rather mercenary, but to his credit, he simply undercut every other retailer, including Walmart, because he buys it in volume. He buys stuff manufactured in third world nations. But his real secret is, he astutely realized that by, but people don't want to go shopping in today's world. Driving a car, getting gas, dealing with the hassles of traffic and shopping malls and stuff is a real pain to your average person. They don't like doing it, or at least most people don't like doing it. Therefore, he made it possible for all the women in America and around the world and all the men, they can, they can cruise through the Amazon uh, website, they can look at clothing or running shoes or furniture or whatever they want for groceries, and they can look and they can see the stuff they like. And guess what? It's so much cheaper than it is at all the local stores. And, and Bezos can deliver it to your house within a day or two or three at most, depending on what you're willing to pay. So, so he shut his empire, you know, is built on the fact he shut everybody else down. Now, that's, that's allowable in capitalism. But notice who he employs, you know, because to, to pack these boxes uh, that Amazon does, to, to, to send out all these goods and products, requires an enormous staff. And notice that Bezos, at a lot of his distribution centers, I guess the overwhelming staff it's, it's it's largely run by people that are not humans his warehouses his fulfillment centers his shipping centers it's just robots and androids and cyborgs and computers and artificial intelligence he does his his i don't know what percentage of his workforce is not human <laughs> so you know okay he's making a lot of money but guess what when every corporation and every corporation lusts for profits. Uh, any corporation that can dump people and start using computers or robots or cyborgs or androids is going to do it. And that's being concealed from you. Oh yeah, you hear about it, but it's being concealed from you. Because robots will, will work a lot cheaper than people. And 24-7. And the other thing is, you have this lying going on that the mainstream media is participating in. The lie is creating this mythology in all the European nations in America. When you do read articles about the fact that humans are not going to have jobs in the near future, you're being told that all these governments are announcing their special programs to employ people, whether they have a job or not, and pay them, you know, a decent middle-class salary every year for doing nothing. And they're being told that in America, too, that, you know, we're, we're proposing legislation that will pay you a decent middle-class salary, whether your job was replaced by robots or not. Well, that sounds very intoxicating. In fact, it sounds appealing. Most people would rather not go to their drudgery, grinding out, you know, a paycheck week after week, 
you know, standing there stuffing boxes or whatever you do. Even high-level jobs are vulnerable to replacement. Most people would rather sit back and kick back, and if you can earn a nice middle-class salary, they'd rather stay home. But look at history. Look at the facts of reality. How long do you really think any nation or any corporation whose main you know, objective is profits and nations, how long do you think any nation or corporation is going to continue to pay people a nice middle-class salary for doing nothing? I mean, if you have even a molecule left of a brain, unless you've been so dumbed down scientifically by the school system, the answer is, it's the expression my father told me when I was a kid growing up in Queens, Paul, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You're not going to get paid for nothing. You're not going to get paid a nice middle-class salary for doing nothing. Okay? It just is not going to happen. You may get that salary for a year or two or three because they don't want open revolution in the streets of America and all these other countries as they replace human workers with robots and computers. They don't want a revolution going on. So they'll placate the masses until they can figure out what they can really do with them. They'll placate the masses... By, by giving them a year or a couple of years of uh, uh, a nice middle class salary and then they'll start to tighten it up and it won't be such a nice salary it'll be a working class salary and then it'll be a below working class salary because there's a basic fact of life people with money powerful corporations and governments do not pay their people for doing nothing. They never have in human history and they never will. Okay? Now, what they do do is make you, I, I could conceive, uh, you know, slave labor. Okay, you can die or work in slave labor camps producing the products like they did when they opened up China and stuff. But you're not going to get a nice middle class salary. I mean, you really have to be living in California or Colorado and smoking a whole lot too much weed or sucking on that bong pipe till your brains are fried. Oh, which, which, which brings me to another important subject. You see, I know that you understand that. Those of you that listen to the Paul McGuire show, you already understand that, but it's your millennial children and grandchildren. It's the other generations or the, the, the naive or all the people that are voting, uh, you know, for free freebies, all the people that, that are uneducated to, to, to the true realities of history. I'm not talking about education in the sense of being programmed into Marxism. No, all the people who understand what's happening know the handwritings on the wall. So, I know those of you that listen to the Paul, Paul McGuire Report already get this, but the people that you and I interact with, the people in our society, millions and millions and millions of them all over the world, do not understand that this is all a trick. And in the end, they're going to end up with nothing. Okay? That's the way it goes. That's the law of history, and it's never changed. Do you think that the, the super rich and the super elite intend to, to, to... These people are ruthless, man. They're ruthless. Don't you get that? The globalist elite, the Rothschild families and these other people are ruthless. They're absolutely ruthless. Do you think they're going to pay you a great salary? No, they're not going to. They'll do it in the short term to keep you asleep but it will be a short-term experience. They have plans for you, by the way. They are going to do things that some of you are aware of. Well, probably most of you who listen to my program are aware of. By the way, you are listening to the Paul McGuire Report. I'm Paul McGuire. And the way we combat this deception 
the lies, the Orwellian big brother control mechanisms and censorship of the mainstream media, the social media giants, the tech media giants. The way we combat this is we speak the truth to power. But in order to speak the truth to power, it has to be heard. And the way it's heard is that we need, all of us need to use every single means of communication at our disposal to communicate the truth. Because when people hear the truth, the truth is like a battering ram on the imprisoned consciousness of of the people around us. So we have to speak the truth in love and with integrity, but then it has to find its way into the hearts and minds of hundreds of millions of people on planet Earth and across the United States. And how is that done? We have to be on social media, if not their social media, alternative social media. We have to be on the Internet with blogs and websites and videos and radio and TV and, and books and, and meetings and stuff. You see, uh, I remember reading years ago what the communists said about how to create a, revolu- a communist revolution in any country. And they basically said, uh, and this is an example of, of the spreading of evil, but it shows you the, ne- the necessary organizational structure and communication structure involved. And, and, and the communists laid out a, a game plan for launching a revolution like in America. And they would say, you know, infiltrate films and filmmakers and begin to have people produce films aimed at the American public, converting them to communism. Use art, you know, like sculpture and painting to convert people to communism. Use literature like newspapers, magazines, uh, websites, news websites, books, fiction and non-fiction to communicate communist principles and ideas to the people. Uh, Use all forms of communication, the communists would say, television, radio, uh, and now uh, the communists would say, take full usage of the internet, social media, uh, videos on social media and the internet, um, any social media platform, use it to disseminate uh, the propaganda of how evil and corrupt America is and sell the masses on the benefits of communism. So when you, when you, when you get it right down to it, they were just the communists. Why... The, the, number one is the communists almost never call themselves communists. I like to use the word because I want to remind people of what they really are. The communists go by different names, but they they use every mechanism of communication to infiltrate and spread their ideas into the minds of hundreds of millions of people because they understand better than many Christians, that the real battle is the battle in the hearts and souls of mankind over whether to cause mankind to embrace socialism, communism, and Marxism and and keep them from uh, uh, going with biblical Christianity, capitalism, uh, traditional moral values, uh, uh, marriage, etc., etc., And essentially, communism teaches that God, uh, that the state is God, that the collective is God, that the Marxist state is God, and that there is no biblical or spiritual God. Versus Christianity and a Christian nation, which America once was, um, they believe that there is a biblical God, and the state is not God. And these are fundamentally different, they're they're diametrically two different viewpoints. Now, I don't know why this isn't taught in Christian high schools and universities and colleges. I know it's taught in some, but not many. Two different worldviews that produce two different results. 
One is a humanist worldview, which communism believes in, which believes essentially that man is God, and they worship man, and they worship the state. Whereas the the values and belief systems that America was originally built on by the Pilgrims and Puritans and founding fathers, it was built on biblical beliefs, biblical morals, the biblical God, and biblical principles. That's why the America is still the most unique nation on planet Earth. Again, not because we're better than anybody else, not because we're uh, more deserving or spiritual, but we built America on biblical ideas. So, for example, in the uh, Declaration of Independence and the Constitution, it says the Creator capital C, that means God. The Creator has given us certain inalienable rights, such as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness, which simply means this, that it is God, God Almighty, that has given every man and woman alive certain inalienable rights. That means that it is God that has given Every man and woman writes like life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And since it is God that gave those rights to all human beings, no man or no man-made government has the right to steal or seize away those rights from the people that were given to them directly by the biblical God. You see the massive difference? Whereas in a communist nation or a socialist nation, whenever a committee, a bunch of bureaucrats, or men decide that they want to take away any particular right they've given you, they just do it. See, the the rights aren't guaranteed in a communist or socialist nation. That's why the United Nations Declaration on, on Human Rights means nothing. That's why the European Union Uh, Declaration on Human Rights means nothing because there's no no guarantor of the rights. You see, in the American Constitution, it is God that gives us the rights, not not government. In both the UN and European Union uh, Declaration of Human Rights, it is committees, it's man that gives you your rights, and therefore, since it's man that gives you their right, your rights, It is man that has the right to take away your rights for any reason. In fact, if you really look carefully at the United Nations Declaration of Human Rights and the European Union's Declaration of Human Rights, uh, and they're numbered, and and you go down the list, and it sounds very much like, wow, well, this is the same thing as the United States Constitution and Bill of Rights, you know, so what's the big deal? It sounds great. But you keep reading... And you'll know, and I'm, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but you'll notice, like in the UN uh, Declaration of Human Rights and in, in, in the European Unions, you'll come to a passage where it says something to this. Like it says, it, this is almost, it's not an exact quote, but it's a paraphrase. It says, if, I mean, after it promises you your so called free speech, freedom of the press, uh, you know, freedom of religion type uh, freedoms. You go down the list. It says, if you publish anything or say anything or or, or, or use your influence to criticize any part of the European Union uh, or any part of the United Nations according to their, both of their declarations of human rights, the EU and the United Nations has the right to come after any individual who, exerci- who actually exercises their freedom of speech or freedom of thought or freedom of, of the press. And if you criticize their government or their rights or whatever, it says that the European Union and the United Nations has the right to imprison you to go back retroactively and seize all your assets and throw you in jail, and worse. So so it's a complete fraud, because if if you dare use your freedom of speech, 
or freedom of the press, and actually criticize the UN or the European Union, they can toss you in jail. They can, with no trial, they can they can uh, take away all your rights. They can seize all your monies, and they can go back retroactively. So, in essence, you have zero rights. Both of them are a smoke and mirrors show. Why? Because it's a humanistic system. And this is what the millennials and the mainstream media will never tell you this because the mainstream media is in the business of lying. They are George Orwell's big brother in 1984. They are the thought police. That's what they are. They are the thought police. Now, what, what do we do about this? Well, we have to recognize we're in a spiritual war. And, and whoever wins this war is going to determine the future of America in the near future, in the future of Europe in the near future, and the future of multitudes of nations in the near future. Because things are moving very quickly. The example of... There are... I don't know how many there are because they, they lie about the numbers and they won't admit to the numbers. Some people have said there have been millions or hundreds of thousands of personal websites and blog sites and like Facebook pages and YouTube accounts. I'm talking about cumulative that have been t- oh and, and uh, Apple whatever it's called uh, uh, what is it iTunes and all these social media platforms and search engines which have removed ordinary people Uh, maybe somebody's writing regular columns on their personal blog site about why they believe climate change is a fraud well they find out that they've been kicked off the, the social media platform or I know people whose YouTubes have been kicked off I know people who had news programs I know ordinary people And I know people who had big internet presence who have been removed off the internet because they weren't saying hate speech or anything, simply because they disagreed with the politically correct uh, mind-controlled dictatorship um, implemented by the social media giants, the tech giants, and mainstream media. That's what it is. That's what the war is all about. So how do we win this war? And any Christian who tells you, oh, just let go, let God, it doesn't matter, God's in control, or any Christian who tells you out of intellectual laziness, because, see, the gays are smart. You want to know why the gays have have gotten so much freedom and so many rights? Because they exercise the biblical principle that the Christians failed to do. The Bible says, the slothful or the lazy shall be under tribute or slavery and the diligent shall bear rule. They will be the rulers in society. Well, let's be honest. If you look at the gay culture, the gay activistic culture, they have been diligent to fight for their rights and as such they have risen to be the rulers of our society. Conversely, Christians have not fought for their rights. They have not been diligent. They have been lazy or slothful. And therefore, the Christian community, for the most part, is under tribute or slavery. Why? Because many of God's principles will work uh, no matter who uses them. And one would think that God's people would be implementing God's principles, but they're not. The gays, in many cases, are far more diligent in uh, exercising God's principles than most Christians are. And therefore, in a free society or semi-free society like the one we live in, they have the right, whether you like it or not, to, to enjoy the fruits of their labor. Therefore, they bear rule. And, and, and the Christians are, are, have become slaves. See, who's being... Look, just ask yourself the question. Who is it that's being kicked off the internet, social media, kicked out of the classrooms, kicked out of everywhere? Who is it that's being trodden underfoot? It's the Christians. 
that the Christians are have become slaves. And they're under the rulership of other groups. How did this happen? It happened because the other groups were diligent. And yet, how many times have you ever heard a pastor speak the truth for crying out loud? How many times have you ever heard another pastor besides me tell it like it is and speak the truth? You haven't. There are some that do. I know them and you know them. And I thank God for each and every one of them. But we're the minority. The average pastor is hiding, hiding, and doesn't want to know the truth. And those of you that support pastors that are hiding in churches that have that say their mission is to reach the world, but in reality their mission is hiding, shame on you. Shame on you before God. I'm not your judge. I'm not your judge. God will judge you. But you will be accountable just like I will. Okay, so how do we how do we how do we deal with this? We cannot surrender to fatalism, which is a poisonous belief system, which says God is sovereign, we can't do anything. This is the last days. The Bible says evil men will grow worse and worse, so we just have to endure until the return of the Lord. That sounds spiritual. But it's a lot of error mixed with a little bit of truth. If that was true, why would God say, Occupy until I come? The way we change the reality around us until the return of the Lord is to obey the Lord's commands to us. And he's very clear. He didn't say, Do nothing and sit on your posterior. Jesus Christ gave us the Great Commission. We know what that is. Part of it means winning souls for Christ. Another part of it means occupy the land until I come. If we were occupying the land, we wouldn't have become the slaves. That means it's it's required by God for us to stand up in a law-abiding, peaceful manner and also spiritually with prayer and fasting and evangelism and reclaim the land that was stolen from us. Because the the historical truth is, America was founded as a Christian nation, whether other people want to acknowledge it or not. And this is not making an anti-Islamic comment or an anti-humanist comment or an anti-anything comment. But the historical fact is very clear. America was founded, America as we know it today. Obviously, there were the Native Americans prior to that. But America, as we know it today, was founded by Bible-believing Christians who served the biblical God and built our entire form of government and society based on Christian principles. Therefore, America is a Christian nation. It is not a Muslim nation. However many Muslims were here at the beginning of America, I'm sure there were some, but In comparison, whatever the contribution or impact they made on American society is non-existent. We're not a Muslim nation. We never have been. We're not an atheist nation. We never have been. So we have to confront the lies with the truth and without animosity, speaking the truth in love. So how do we do that? Number one, going back to what I've been sharing a lot of, is in the book of Genesis, the first character, and that's a bad way of saying it, the first thing we learn about God in God's Bible is in the first book in the Bible, Genesis, in the first verse in Genesis, chapter 1, verse 1, it talks about God creating, which tells us that God is the Creator, capital C. In fact, it describes God as the Creator, capital C, a few verses down from there. So the first characteristic of God that we learn about in the Bible is that He's creative. Therefore, our approach must be reflected in the image of God, and we must be creative. We must creatively present the truth so that we can win the hearts and souls of mankind. You can't win the hearts and souls of mankind if you're not creatively presenting the truth. No one will listen. And then we use every form of media at our disposal to aggressively, not with anger, 
but with creativity, compel people to to um, understand that Christ is the true God and the the enormous benefits of the Bible, because the the ultimate source of all of America's prosperity and freedom comes right out of a supernatural covenant in the Bible that the pilgrims and Puritans made with God. So let's take Paul McGuire Ministries in Paradise Mountain Church. What are we about? What we're about is using every single media at our disposal to creatively engage the minds of people, that means to be fishers of men, and bring them into the kingdom, and to use the same creative and yet anointed by the Holy Spirit approach to occupy the land until we come. That's why I'm dealing, I'm doing the program uh, on the topic that I am today, because if censorship is allowed to continue, it will kill the preaching of the gospel. So as a man of God with a conscience, I feel compelled to stand up and speak out about it. I can't be like these other pastors who are totally silent about everything. My, I can't put my pillow on the head and sleep at night. My conscience bothers me. I don't know how the guys do it. I'm not here to judge them. I can't, I can't do that. So our ministry is launching out in as many ways as possible. And the fact of the matter is the measurable results are this. We have a huge number of people coming to Christ But these are the people that are not being reached by most religious Christian groups. And they're hearing our messages on the internet, they're hearing them on the Paul McGuire Report, they're seeing our videos up on YouTube, and they're seeing our videos on real life, and they're seeing our our television broadcast quality prophecy messages and videos on our Roku channel at Paul McGuire uh, Ministries. You can go there by going to paulmcguire.us. They're reading our books because, praise God, people are buying extra copies of the books. They're circulating them and they're giving them around and they're being spread. Thank God for that. So they're being influenced by our books, uh, uh, videos of conferences I speak at, uh, reading uh, books uh, on a mass level like Trumpocalypse and uh, um, um, the Babylon Code. We're influencing the decision makers of our nation, the president, the vice president, uh, the highest level leaders in Washington, D.C. have read uh, Trumpocalypse and they've read the Babylon Code. So the powerful Christian truth embedded in those books is going to the highest people in the land. And they're reading it because we wrote it in a, in, a, in a style that engages their minds. And then we're making a feature film uh, of Trumpocalypse that will be seen by people in theaters and a feature film of the Babylon Code that will also enjoy a theatrical release. We also have another uh, book coming out. And then the articles I write that are viral. And you can read those articles for free. We have hundreds of thousands of pages of articles at paulmcguire.us. See, it all. this is all a combined effect. When I, uh, somehow I saw that, the, the, I, I hadn't looked at it in a while, but when you uh, look at, there's no way to measure the combined numerical visits and reads of all the articles that I've written that have gone viral, because obviously we don't get a numerical credit for stuff which we allow people to print for free on their websites. But we're talking about 60 million people a year at least, and this has been going on for 10 years, and yet we're a small ministry. So think of the size of our ministry and the fact that we're influencing 60 million people a year at least. At least. You see, why does that happen? That's not, that's not wasting, that doesn't come from wasting money, building spectacular buildings, and all the rest of that stuff. That comes from a very extremely modest uh, operation, but has dedicated and committed. And we're always pressing forward and growing it. 
and the, 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 the impact of souls that are being won is huge. And the amount of people who backslid and returned to Christ is huge. And the message is influencing our society like salt and light the way it's supposed to be. So, we have identified that we're supposed to be engaged in the, in the battle for the hearts and minds of mankind. And I explained to you what we're doing. Now, no man, including me, or any man or woman, could, could possibly even begin to do this by themselves. So, the secret of our being able to do this is the principle I've been sharing with you uh, from Genesis 11 about oneness, moving together in unity as one, and the fact that God says nothing that they purpose to do, nothing that they imagine to do, nothing that they conceive to do will be withheld from them. In other words, they'll be able to do the impossible if, if they will function as one, if they will uh, carry out their mission as one, then in that oneness, in that, muni- uh, uh, in that unity, nothing is impossible for them. I'm not talking about false, counterfeit, false doctrine, ecumenical unity. I'm talking about true unity among true believers in Jesus Christ. And that's where you and I come in. You listen to this program. I praise God for you. But you listen to this program, and many of you have chosen to become one with me in this ministry. And you've done that because you've sought the Lord, and as believers in Christ, you do what God tells you to do. And so again, I praise the Lord for the countless numbers of you that are praying for me, my family, and this ministry on a regular basis because we are in the middle of a spiritual warfare on the front lines. Thank you for your prayers. Those of you that obey the Lord when he inspires you and calls you to do an end run uh, using your media internet talents to enable us to get around the sensors and to do an end run. You just take it upon yourself to do it. Well, God sees what you're doing and he rewards you. So I thank you for that. And then those of you that are faithful with your regular contributions, those of you that seek the Lord, and even if God tells you to do something out of the box or unorthodox, you do it. And you obey the Lord in whatever he tells you to do, Whatever amount he tells you to give financially in terms of contributions or donations, you do. And because of your obedience in the areas of finances, that helps us to pay for all the projects we're doing. And and sometimes I feel embarrassed to talk about certain needs. So I don't always mention the needs. Um, But the needs are, are like weird. I mean, right now, we were walking through the, the facility where we are building the studio, and we knew this going into it, but um, because it's been so hot out here in Southern California, the interior of the studio must have been about 100, 120 degrees. Well, obviously, you, if you add to that television lights, that'll heated up to 130 degrees. I mean, you'd pass out trying to do programming. And I really, really didn't want to have to spend money on two things, but primarily this one. Because I much would, I would much prefer to spend it on editing and cameras, which we have. We've accumulated cameras and editing equipment. And it kind of, it, it breaks my heart to have to spend it on this, but it has to be done. It's one of those expenses, among many expenses, that has to be done or nothing will happen. And that is installing air conditioning equipment. I'm not talking about some huge air conditioners. You can get a small series of powerful air conditioning units that run relatively silently that will cool down the interior of the studio. Because right now, it's impossible to do it. 
we brought the cameras in there yesterday and we're testing and it's just it's just, it's impossible and then there has to be we thought the soundproofing was adequate well guess what this is southern california not as noisy as new york city but it's noisy so we have to you know triple quadruple the soundproofing um which i'm familiar with because when i was hosting the paul mcguire report radio program excuse me the paul mcguire show radio program we had this room here which we're using as a studio has soundproofing not perfect but but it has it but soundproofing for the television studio um is going to be uh it has to be done otherwise sound uh and noise ambient noise will drive people crazy so those are big expenses and then lighting um tom horn was talking to me about this when i was at tom horn's tv studio um he told me because i spent a lot of time talking to tom horn and his staff Derek gilbert and others and uh, uh joe horn um and they told me the most expensive part of their studio because they're a very nice studio the most expensive part of their studio was the lighting which shocked me they because he said the lighting um was the most expensive because you need a specific type of lighting now i already knew that but in order for people to come on camera and not look like they're dying but because believe me i've been on some television programs where i look like i'm dying and no i wasn't dying it was poorly lit you've got to light it properly with the right kind of lights that are not too hot and the si- the, the budget for lights again is one of these things that yeah i knew it's expensive but i didn't really want to have to spend at that level but anyway it has to be done and then we have the feature film coming out of Trump apocalypse and this feature film will enable us to get our message to do an and run around the the censors and distribute our message in theaters and give it all kinds of visibility and that's the goal that's the goal so you can partner with us passionately enthusiastically like going to the lord and, and and you know what don't go to the lord unless you want to do it with a spirit of rejoicing because god loves a cheerful giver and if you're not cheerful well i'm not going to i don't i don't believe in manipulating and forcing people i think if you understood and it took me a long time to understand this myself i think if you understood the spiritual law of the kingdom which essentially says if you're busy and faithful about your father's business that your heavenly father will be busy about your business and take care of your watch your back and take care of your needs if you really understood that i don't think you'd have uh, i think you'd be able to rejoice and i must say as for myself uh that lesson took me decades so i'm sympathetic the bottom line is that we are in such a critical uh time right now both in America and in the vast majority of the world whatever nation you're living living in you're facing the same the same prospects perhaps even more intensely that it's now or never because once this censorship goes through if you look at history it never it never is undone So I need those of you that partner with me by listening to this program to seek the Lord and really begin to pray like never before. Not just for me and the ministry and what we're doing but for your own lives, your own families and for the nation. And then obey the Lord no matter what he tells you to do. Get out of the get out of this thing. I've had to train myself to to get out of this um uh shoebox mentality where where I kind of play a game with the Lord you know I I make up my mind before I seek the Lord and then I pretend to 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 get the guidance from God while I'm seeking him and then I bam no I, the Lord showed me that was dishonest because I was already making up my mind 
before I truly sought him. And what has happened is my level of faith, uh, my level of belief that God is going to move is way higher than it used to be. So you can partner with us, um, and I ask you to personally, because a lot is at stake. I'm not talking about regarding our ministry, but regarding the future of our nation and the future of this world. So if you want to partner with us, you can do so by going to paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And if you, you can do it electronically. It's a highly secured system. And if you prefer to do it through mail, there's a, a mail for the church P.O. box there, some enemy of the gospel deliberately lied and said that was our church when when nobody ever said it was the church it was obvious it was the p.o box and in fact our church meetings are are broadcast and up on uh the internet uh, in their locations when we meet at uh, local hotels and have uh, met at local hotels for, I don't know, since 2008. And uh, just about every one of those, well, I think every single one of those meetings have been audio recorded and video recorded. But this was an attempt to try to discredit our ministry. And uh, by lying, by lying, by telling a lie. And that's, that's when you're in the front lines, that's just part of, part of what you got to deal with. So no complaints. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. Stand with us. By the way, if you're for, consider, uh, we have a Paradise Mountain Church meeting coming up uh, Thursday, uh, August 23rd, at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City, California. And the title of my message is God's Supernatural Plan for America in the Last Days, The Vision. And it starts at 6 p.m. And God's going to move. The power of the Holy Spirit's going to move. Um, and it's a time of, it's not a political meeting, it's a time of ministry. And as you join us and worship with us, and uh, uh, as I teach God's prophetic word, God moves. And when I say God moves, is that he strengthens people supernaturally. He delivers people. He, meet their, he meets their needs and miracles happen. And when I say miracles happen, I'm not trying to, you know, do like a showbiz presentation. But miracles happen, often of a complete surprise to me. We were, we were, we were, had just begun the meeting and uh, a minister's wife whose arm was, was injured or something, she could barely move it. Uh, and she'd seen the doctor and within, uh, I guess, what, five or ten minutes of being in the room where the presence of the Lord was, she was, her arm was supernaturally healed, and she stood up to testify about it. People, miracles have happened to many other people in terms of jobs, open doors, provisions, and 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 that happens because when we meet, it's not a dry academic atmosphere. We're meeting in the presence of the Lord. And where the presence of the Lord is, there's joy, there's healing, there's deliverance, and there's salvation. So when I invite you to join with me uh, on August 23rd, uh, Thursday at 6 p.m. at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City, California, my message will be God's supernatural plan for America in the last days, the vision. Okay, And I want to show you what that vision is that the Lord gave me. And um, so pray before you say no or yes, seek the Lord. And if the Lord tells you to come, come. Does it mean you may have to inconvenience yourself? Absolutely. You should consider it a privilege to inconvenience yourself because in a lot of nations you can't even go to a Christian meeting. So wherever you live, if the Lord tells you to come, come and be blessed. And then in September... Uh, we have another meeting, I believe it's September 20th, at the Sportsman's Lodge at 6 p.m. Yeah, that's uh, the September 20th in September at 6 p.m., Sportsman's Lodge. And then October, November, December, we'll have meetings. 
probably more than once, probably numerous times uh, during the, the months. And if you can't make it, uh, we are going to televise uh, each one of these meetings in um, HD broadcast quality professionally uh, uh, videoed by a Hollywood cameraman and team. And you'll be able to watch that on the Recruit Recru channel, which is called paulmcguire.us. In fact, you can watch previous services that we've ha held uh, on the Recruit channel. So visit paulmcguire.us and spread the word. Pray and bring someone. And when you come, and if you truly say, see, let's see, if you, if you say you're going to seek the Lord and you don't, then you, you have no idea of knowing whether God wants you to come or not. Now, if God tells you to come, that means he's got something for you. So, obey the Lord. This is a principle that I live by. Um, not perfectly, just like you, but I, I, I live by it. And I've seen the great, the great and mighty things which God has done. And isn't that what you want? I mean, do you want to be a ho-hum, average, normal Christian? I don't. I want to be on the cutting edge. I want to. I want to experience the great and mighty things which God has done. And guess what? God, He's desirous to pour out upon you and your loved ones and your family and your nation the great and mighty things which Thou hast done. He's he, He's desirous to do great and mighty things in your life, not just mediocre. And you've got to raise the level of your expectation according to God's word. God wants to supernaturally naturally deliver you. He wants you. He wants to move in your life miraculously. Now that doesn't mean that this isn't going to come without a spiritual battle. There will be a spiritual battle, and but you will be victorious. See, we all face spiritual battles. I face them constantly. I wish I didn't, but I do. But God wants you to be victorious. And finally, I have this to share with you. For crying out loud, God has a supernatural plan for America and in many of the nations that you're listening to me in in the last days. And you are a pivotal part, you, wherever you are listening, male or female, in America or any place in the world. If you're listening to me, say this now, and the Holy Spirit is ministering to your heart and touching you as I speak you know that you have a part to play. It, you may think, well, I'm just one person. Well, so am I. I'm just one person. You have a part to play in God's supernatural plan for both America or whatever nation you're in in the last days. Otherwise, w w there's no purpose in our being here. And I want to explain the vision in light of God's supernatural plan for America in the last days. Now, it's true. America is facing literally judgment uh, or blessing. And if, if God's people do not step up to the plate and stand for freedom spiritually and in law-abiding peaceful means, this is a word of warning, the gospel will be shut down in many areas. It will be a crippling of the spreading of Jesus and the gospel and Christianity because they they are going to outlaw it as hate speech. You can live in, you can live in Willy Wonka's chocolate factory as long as you possibly want to, but that's what history tells us. So we have to act now while it's still reversible. And if you think that these powerful globalist elite are just after you know the Alex Joneses of the world, you are naive and uneducated when it comes to history. They start with people like him, but they always, every totalitarian regime hates Christianity, and they're going to remove anything Christian because they're going to call it hate speech. So God has given us the power now, may not be available to us a year from now, to stand up, and change that. And shame on you again. I don't care if you don't like me. I'm not here to be liked, by the way. I'm here to tell the truth. And shame on you if you stand silently by and you attend some church where the pastor is all about hiding out and not doing anything. 
and you're giving your tithes and contributions and your energy and your volunteerism and your your fellowshipping with believers who the, the price tag for for being accepted by them is to be apathetic, disengaged, and not know what's going on, and not obey the call of God. If that's what you want to do with your life, well, you're free to do that. But as for me and my household, we're going to serve the Lord. God bless you. I really believe God wants to move powerfully in your own life. I believe God wants to give you deliverance in your own life, healing in your own life, salvation among your family members. Those family members that have walked away from the Lord, he wants to bring back. Those that were never saved, he wants to save. But he's waiting for you to call on him, and he will move. I don't care what it is, fighting with autoimmune diseases, fighting with anxiety and depression, whatever the battle is, God is on your side. But he needs you to call on him. Call on him. God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire. Visit paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. And and I can't wait to see you at the Sportsman's Lodge in Studio City. By the way, admission is free, but you need to register, and you need to go to paulmcguire.us, spread the word prayerfully to people that you believe God wants to be there. Don't, don't bring people that God doesn't want to be there. Um... And admissions free, but you can get the map, the instructions, and everything you need to know. Free parking, by the way. Uh, um, you can get everything you need to know by going to paulmcguire.us. That's paulmcguire.us. God bless you. I'm Paul McGuire. Remember, he that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. <laughs>